it's crazy because we'll be doing these dives and we will see monk seals while diving and we'll see sea turtles while diving. So they're using those areas. They're diving in those places that are severely impacted by marine debris um, and hazards in the water. And it makes sense why that's one of the biggest threats to these animals. Um, because you're right, a lot of times as humans, we don't dive those sites, but they do. We've been learning about species extinction and endangerment since our classroom days, but it is never a topic we truly think to associate our lives with. As species extinction becomes more and more apparent at an alarming rate, government organizations, NGOs, and individuals are turning their attention towards conserving those most affected by climate change and by extension, human activity. In this episode, we'll be taking you all the way to Hawaii to look at the conservation efforts to protect an endangered native species called the Hawaiian monk seals. So the Hawaiian monk seal is endemic to Hawaiian waters, which means that they're found nowhere else on earth. And this species is one of the most endangered species of marine mammals. They have actually been around for about 15 million years. They are descendants of the Caribbean monk seal, and then they broke off to form their own species of Hawaiian monk seals. Throughout history, we can see a common trend in how threats influence species survival rates. These threats can be defined as changes in the natural environment and interference by human activity. Usually changes in the natural environment can be connected back to human activity, which drive animal endangerment. So back in the 19th century, during the like whaling period, monk seals were hunted to the brink of extinction, primarily for their blubber and oil. When I was on island, I was reading some old uh, journal entries from the early 1900s from scientific and exploration expeditions. And I saw that they never saw a live monk seal. They found a few skeletons, but during the time they never saw a live one. So pretty much in the early 1900s, it looked like the numbers were pretty low already. But then in 1976, they were listed as endangered under the Endangered Species Act. And conservation efforts ever since then has led to a rise in population to now reach this 1400. Um, and over the last 10 years or so, there has been a very slow but steady increase in the population, which is promising for us right now. It's, and it's really good because it kind of shows all the efforts that we're doing are actually making a difference. So there's basically two subpopulations of Hawaiian monk seals. There are the main Hawaiian island species or population and then there is the Northwestern Hawaiian Island population. So that is north of the main islands and it's uninhabited by humans other than the, the biologists that go out there. Uh, and so once humans came and made it their home, it kind of, the monk seals all sort of just migrated north up to the Northwesterns and either were hunted off the ones that stayed on the main Hawaiian islands or they all just migrated up north. Um, I guess they really just wanted to be alone. These unique seals hold significant social, cultural, and ecological importance in the state of Hawaii. The Hawaiian community is greatly involved in the conservation and amplification of Hawaiian monk seals especially through naming ceremonies. Local grade school classes get to name the monk seal pups that are born each year, which is pretty cool. There's also this community of photographers um, and seal enthusiasts that pretty much know every seal on the main Hawaiian Islands by name. And usually they know where they are at any given time too. You can go up and ask them and be like, oh, where's Rocky? They'll be like, oh, Rocky's at this and this beach. It's pretty cool. As a result of marine pollution that has resulted in the degradation of the environment, some of the most critically endangered animals in the world are marine animals. The biggest threats to Hawaiian monk seals is just simply human impact. Um, and that comes from so many different things that humans do and practices that we do that impact Hawaiian monk seals on a daily basis, but also just the marine ecosystem that the Hawaiian monk seals need for survival. 
The Hawaiian monk seals, they face many different threats, some of which including like diseases such as toxoplasmosis, which is a parasite, which is commonly found in cats. So this disease can easily spread from cats to monk seals. Um, but there are also a lot of anthropogenic or human caused threats as well. So to name a few, there's like entanglement, food limitation, habitat loss. Um, so with entanglement, Hawaiian monk seals actually have one of the highest entanglement rates of any pinniped or seal species um, due to the massive amounts of marine debris and derelict fishing gear found throughout the Pacific. So when I was on Laysan, there was a marine debris removal cruise that came up and they spent about two weeks um, total in the monument, um, picking up over 100,000 pounds of trash. And that sounds like a lot of, a lot of debris. But really, when you look at before and after, it looks almost negligible, which is sad because that's just how much debris there is. As climate change continues, the ocean ecosystem kind of shifts in productivity. When there once was a lot of fish, a lot of octopus, squid, now that these numbers are decreasing and instead there's becoming more plankton or smaller fish. So it's making it more difficult for the monk seals, specifically the uh, younger juveniles, to actually forage and hunt and stuff. So that make, that's another threat they're facing. And then finally, habitat loss is a big one. So with sea level rise, especially in the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands, islands are pretty much being washed away. The islands are, can be less than 10 feet above sea level. And so in 2018, we actually saw Hurricane Wallaka, which was a hurricane up there that washed away one of the main pupping beaches um, for these Hawaiian monk seals. So just with a culmination of different factors, they are, heavily threatened. Efforts are being undertaken by individuals and organizations to minimize human effects and further combat threats which are facing Hawaiian monk seals. So the cool thing about Hawaiian monk seals, and really it's a lot of protected species, is that the community is highly invested and involved in uh, their success pretty much. So federal government, which is NOAA, uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, um, funds and conducts research and implements management strategies and plans. So that's who I went to Laysan Island with. There's also a numerous nonprofits throughout Hawaii that work to educate the public and protect the species as a whole. Um, so yeah, here in Hawaii, I am uh, researching the underwater acoustic communication among seals. And also I'm looking at how um, these acoustic signals or their communication is being impacted by man-made underwater noise like boats and sonar. Um, and these are questions that have never been answered before. We, we don't know how seals are being impacted by man-made underwater noise. So in order to better understand that, we first need to understand, you know, how these seals are using sounds underwater. Um, and then we can start looking at how their behavior and how their vocal activity is potentially being impacted by uh, man-made man -made sounds. One of our jobs is to mitigate any threats. I saw I saw this juvenile sitting on the beach in front of camp one night. And so I was just sitting up there watching it from a distance. And then I see this larger adult male come swimming up pretty, pretty fast. And I thought that he might do something. But as I continue to watch, it ended up that these two seals were playing together, kind of like a puppy would. And they played for probably half an hour as I watched them, just enjoying their time together until they finally just swam away together. And I don't know if they knew each other or what the circumstances were, but it was really fun to watch. While some people have taken it upon themselves to raise awareness of these native seals and educate people on ecotourism, there is an apparent need for greater involvement in the community. I think pretty much all of us at this point have seen the viral videos that have gone around of tourists acting irresponsibly around Hawaiian monk seals and other species too, like sea turtles, which are also very culturally significant and protected. Um, but we've seen these tourists acting irresponsibly around these wild animals. And there's no excuse for their behavior, but a lot of it is because they just simply don't know that they're not supposed to do that. And so if we can be the people to educate them and get to them first, basically teach them how to be respectful and responsible beachgoers, um, that has a huge impact on the Hawaiian monk seals and just reducing disturbance to them on a daily basis. So I think it's time that we start educating ourselves. 
and not just on Hawaiian monk seals and the threats that they face, but also things like climate change, sea level rise, and the impacts we have as humans. While I was there at Papahanaum Kuakea, I saw firsthand the amount of debris and rubbish that were littering the coastlines. I saw how small spits of sand were that were once large islands, and I saw that I saw a reef that was slowly dying. So it's time I think we hold ourselves accountable for our actions and work together to protect this planet and our ocean. I think that people, you know, if they're concerned about monk seals or if they want to learn more, definitely go to NOAA's uh, website. They have a lot of great information, um, you know, really, really good videos and diagrams um, that they can look at to just get a general overview of seals. Um, here in Hawaii, you know, the the main thing that we can do is if you have cats, please keep your cats indoors. When you see a seal on the beach, don't approach it. You know, they they live hard lives. They're, they're on the beach resting, um, trying to get as much sleep as they can. And we want to try to limit the disturbance of seals. So um, NOAA and HMAR, Hawaii Marine Animal Response, do a really good job at, you know, blocking off the seals and making these seal safe zones where people cannot get closer than, um, you know, 50 meters away. So. Um, don't approach seals if you see them on the beach. Just, you know, enjoy them from a distance. They're incredible animals. And if you see them, it's it's such a wonderful experience, you know, with 1400 seals left in the world, just you should appreciate seeing that one seal. And I recommend before you travel to Hawaii, do educate yourself on how to be a good ocean steward, uh, how to act responsibly around the wildlife that we have here and how to respect the culture and the Aina in general, the island itself. Um, and I would say that about anywhere that we travel. It's important for us to be responsible travelers when we go to new places. Um, and so I would love that if everybody before they come to Hawaii, just do your research before you come. Though the cooperation of nonprofits and governments play a huge role in the conservation of the environment as well as animals within it, we as individuals and inhabitants of this planet have an accountability towards long-lasting and responsible actions. It is time we take action step by step to reduce our individual impact by leading consciously responsible lives. As Jane Goodall once said, every time one species disappears from an area, it is like pulling tread from the tapestry of life. And as you pull more and more treads, the tapestry gets weaker and you eventually get ecosystem collapse. I think just educating yourself on it and respecting the seals um, is the best thing that you can do. And you know, reach out, reach out to Noah, reach out to me. And if you have any questions, I'm always happy to chat about seals. And yeah, just really love that moment. If you ever get to see a seal in person, it's, it's incredible. Every time I see one, it's makes you feel so good because there's not very many left in the world. So 